Hey guys, hope you're doing well. You know, as we wrap up October, this is the time of year that me personally, anyway, I start to look at the Arctic because as things start to play out here, I think you can start to see some signs of maybe how winter will shape up. One thing that we're looking at, we've got more snow on the ground across the Northern Hemisphere compared to a year ago. We're gonna talk about that today. We've also still got some decently warm water and some pretty chilly water kind of colliding just off uh, the coast of Alaska. And I think that will also play a part. There's some big global things that play here and there's also gonna be a pattern shift. So we're gonna look at that too in the video. Thanks for coming by guys. You know, I'm blown away the small channel already. Uh, so many of you subscribing just in the past couple of days, we blew through 8,000 uh, subscribers. And uh, again, thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new, my name is Travis Roberts. Uh, I am a former TV chief meteorologist, but not on television anymore. I've been out for several years, but I still like to do these types of videos and I really enjoy winter forecasting. So if you want to follow along, come on over and subscribe. Let's look at what's going on though in the Arctic. Check it out. This is where we were last year. If you were to go back in time, the, the blue shows snow cover. The orange is the ice sheet. All right, check this out. This was last year. Boom, a lot more snow, especially here across parts of Canada, even over into Siberia, we've got more snow cover, and that matters because snow, while it doesn't create cold, you get more reflectivity, the albedo effect starts to kick in. The sun is getting super low in the sky too here. If anything, we're starting to almost lose daylight in many areas altogether. So with that setting up, the cold air is starting to build here, and that just means more cold air to break off. And the colder it gets, I think, here with... What's going on in the ocean, too? Look at this, some really warm water. This is something that we're still seeing this week here just to the south of Alaska, east of Japan here. And remember, I showed you all that cold air building. At least there's more snow on the ground. That tells me it's colder. And where we see that temperature difference is likely where we'll see big storms form. And I think that matters. It's going to continue to dump snow into the Canadian prairies, into the Northwest Territories. As we build that, that cold air likely to start to get deeper and deeper. And I think it's just a matter of time before some of that breaks off and moves south. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. We'll start to feel some of that, though, as we head into the weekend. Now, look, there you go. Big storm right here in the Gulf of Alaska, right there where I was showing you that big temperature difference in the waters here. So I think this will be an area for big storms. And this one's going to slam into the West Coast as we head into, what, Monday and Tuesday. It's going to bring snow here into the Cascades, Utah, inland into Colorado, and some questions are, are really are still going to really persist as we head into the beginning of the week. How far south does this move? One thing we're seeing, I'm going to back it up because we had a, a pretty decent polar vortex here spinning across the northern hemisphere. That actually starts to weaken some as we head into next week. And a little bit of ridging looks like it's going to try to develop here around the Arctic. That really is going to shove some of this cold air south. So that, that's one of the reasons we're getting the cold air really far south into the southwest heading into next week with some large ridging across the east coast. So trough in the west ridge in the east that means we're going to be above average here below average in the west really pushing things out now into the first part of november again you can't really track any of these individual lobes of cold air if you will but uh, and, and really rely on it with a lot of detail but i think that the polar vortex is breaking down here across the north pole as we head into the first of november and again watch these big storms right in here and there's another one right off the coast of alaska just bringing that moisture here into canada so I think that will continue, and that would likely mean a trough in the west again with more ridging in the east. That is not a cold weather pattern for the east, and it looks like that might persist. If you look at the long-term weeklies, dumping quite a bit of snow out here, continuing to just pile the snow up here into the mountains uh, on the coastal ranges anyway. And really, these are just uh, averages of, of several model runs, but the idea will still be to continue to build that snowpack across the Canadian prairies and as winter moves on, we move that snowpack further to the south. But one thing I think is pretty decent here showing up on on these weeklies below average which makes sense right if you got big storms here in the gulf of alaska you're probably going to be colder than average here also into the west as we go into the first part of november just like what we saw cold in the west warm in the east with that ridge so blow torch weather here as uh, warm temperatures continue i think they go into november into parts of the east yeah we're going to get shots of cold air from time to time but i think overall that storm pattern is going to be pretty active across the west so if you're hoping for snow over the next week, you got to go to the Rockies and you got to get pretty high up. But we will see snow here at least through Thursday and Friday and some more snow possible heading toward the end of the week. Let's time some of this out. We'll take you all the way, first of all, through Friday and then into the weekend. Some showers moving east on Friday through the Great Lakes into the northeast. This is going to be a shot of some cold air here from Michigan all the way east into the northeast. And uh, some snow showers possible into the highest elevations as this moisture exits. 
Much colder here with that northwest flow, temperatures dropping below normal, but way above average ahead of our next trough. So really from, from the Rockies east, we start to warm up here, and that ridge really starts to build north all the way into the northern plains, into the southern prairies of Canada here as we move into Monday and Tuesday. There comes our storm slamming into the west with the rain here in the valleys, snow in the mountains, and it could be decent too. And then that starts to push off to the east. Now, an area of low pressure looks like it's going to try to form somewhere here. That could mean some heavy snow here for the Rockies, back into the Wasatch here in the Utah, north into the mountains of Wyoming, Montana, even Idaho. And then that looks like it's going to shift off to the north and east. And will this bring us our first, first snow of the season here for parts of South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota? To be determined, we're talking about midweek next week. At this point, it doesn't look like a huge storm. But high pressure still holding on here to the east coast. Strong southwest flow out ahead of this with temperatures way above normal from the Gulf Coast all the way into southern Ontario. High, very warm and toasty here uh, for the last week of October. Some colder air tries to sneak in here to the, uh, the Midwest, also into the northern plains as we head towards the end of next week, so Thursday and Friday. And then maybe another storm moving into the west coast. So really at this point, we're getting beyond what the models are really good at predicting but i think you got to watch the tropics here i mean right so this is the latest run of the gfs it's trying to develop something here if you go back to last night's run still had something here in the gulf about this time and uh i would say just pay attention it's still hurricane season after all there's our storm slamming into the west a closer look at this heading into saturday and sunday snow levels at first are kind of high and then they start to drop as we head into monday and tuesday and that moisture, I don't know if it moves all the way south and into the Sierra Nevada. I don't know that it gets that, again, that far uh, down to the south. Definitely colder here, and that would set up for some snow showers and some rain showers in the valleys here heading into Wednesday and Thursday with yet another storm. This one may be a little further south, so we have to watch this heading into the end of next week. Again, your snow totals will be highest in the mountains, and if you really push this out, this will count the next storm. Boy, it is really snowing here up into the mountains of British Columbia. We could be measuring snow in feet here. Pretty wild. There's the rain moving through uh, the Midwest uh, down into parts of the Mississippi Valley. A lot of this falling apart. Many of these areas haven't seen rain in a very, very long time. And I don't know that we're going to see a lot with this particular system. As we move into Saturday, high pressure builds in here with cooler conditions on the east side of that, especially as that cold air moves in to the northeast. We start to see that rain at least across northern parts of the northeast, change over to snow for just a little bit, but it doesn't last very long. We may get a second shot of some snow showers into parts of Maine uh, heading into Sunday and then into Monday, then high pressure builds in and we dry out. The big deal, though, will be the cool down on the way, although temperatures on Friday will be pretty warm. It'll take a little while for this cool air to move in. Saturday not looking too bad, but uh, as we move into Sunday, now we're waking up into the 20s here into the northeast. This would be Monday morning. I think that would be the coldest time here. You can see some teens showing up here uh, into the St. Lawrence Valley here uh, and then into parts of Maine. Again, I think some of these sheltered valleys will get colder. So a lot going on. I, I do think, again, there will be multiple chances for snow, especially across the West. How much snow in the East this winter? I think it's a little too hard to tell. One thing's for sure, November to me looks above average. Is that a sign of what's to come? Maybe so. I don't know. I hope you have a great day and hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.